So I've been asked to speak about nutritional issues in um, the refugee population and although there's many uh, nutritional deficiencies, the most common is um, anemia um, in the uh, newcomer population. Do you want to go into the next slide? Sure. Um, so just a quick overview, we'll talk about the definition of anemia prevalence, um, causes some of the screening and treatment uh, options that we have. So according to the Mayo Clinic, anemia is a condition in which you don't have enough healthy red blood cells to carry adequate oxygen to your um, body tissues. Having anemia makes you tired and weak. So according to the World Health Organization, um, it estimates that the number of people that suffer from anemia is approximately two billion, 2 billion worldwide. So significant burden of disease and um, they estimate that 50% of those people are women and children. Um, and they're uh, most often from developing countries. About 25% are men. Um, and this can be uh, from acquired um, causes or in, um, genetic causes. Um, so some of the causes are nutritional deficiency, a diet low in iron um, or uh, vitamin B12 both of which are the building blocks to develop um, or produce uh, hemoglobin. Um, other diseases that can cause low hemoglobin are such things as malaria, um, parasite infections, um, HIV, um, TB, and uh, anemia, chronic disease, where your, your body is so busy fighting off other infections and uh, conditions that it can't produce enough hemoglobin. Um, some inherited causes are thalassemia, um, sickle cell anemia, and uh, G6P deficiencies. And each, um, uh, each of these are seen in different uh, parts of the world. Um, so it's really important to take a really good history um, from the individual. Asking about the country of origin, again, gives you some ideas to what kind of hereditary um, issues you may be dealing with. Um, the time spent in a refugee camp, um, often they don't have enough um, food source um, to provide adequate nutrition um, uh, and a, a available water um, source, again looking for um, risk of parasitic infections. Um, you want to ask about symptoms, what are their energy level like, um, any other physical symptoms like cough, do they have TB? Um, are they having a fever? You know, is malaria an issue? Have they been exposed to HIV or um, any of the other in infections? Um, some of the tests that you would normally order um, to rule out anemia, um, a CBC or a complete uh, blood count, your uh, ferritin, which is an iron level. Um, she went back too fast. Um, uh, so vitamin B12, particularly in uh, populations like the Bhutanese uh, community, which um, seem to be prone to vitamin or vitamin B12 uh, deficiency, um, often HIV tests, um, uh, chest X-ray, which is often done by the uh, public health unit um, when they um, have a positive TB skin test, um, stools for ova and parasite, again checking for um, any parasitic infections. Um, and depending on the history and depending on the individual exposure, you may also order different tests. So treatment, you want to treat the underlying cause. If it's um, iron deficiency, you would want to give them an iron supplement. And, uh, or if it's vitamin B12, then you would give them a vitamin B12 supplement. And you would actually expect to see the hemoglobin um, go up fairly quickly. You would um, see it go up within about two weeks. Um, so again, um, some of the other tests that you've done, if they have parasites, you'd want to treat them for that, um, and uh, whatever other underlying conditions you have. Um, it is um, pretty important to follow, um, and if it's not responsive um, in about a month, you'd want to figure out and um, do f uh, further testing. Also, why this is so important, particularly in kids, um, this affects brain development. This affects how well they do in school. This affects, um, you know, their developmental outcomes. 
as well as um, for older um, adults, uh, you want to make sure that they have the energy level to do um, what they need to. Thank you.